In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we'd like to show you how to take an image that you've broken into two or more pieces and visually assemble it right in your video. It's a real nice way to add a little interest to any image that's part of your project. Now obviously in order to do this you need an image that you've already taken and split at least two ways. If you're a user of Photoshop or Photoshop Elements, we have a tutorial we just created for that. It's in our Photoshop Elements playlist. It's called Splitting an Image into Rectangular Pieces because we'll be using uh, rectangles in order to show you how to do this. And so that's available to you if you need it or you can use other software of your choice. What I'm going to do is assemble a picture of this bridge. I've taken that and I've broken it into four unequal components. And if you look in the media room, you'll be able to see what we have here. I'll click on one of them and you can see. The way I've broken this up and created PNG files is that the image is part of the file, but the other area around it is transparent. That makes it very easy to assemble the image because all the uh, file sizes, all the dimensions of the image are identical. So let me show you how easy that is to do. I have a background here I've just put on for contrast sake on track number one and I'll take the four uh, quadrants represented by lower left, lower right, upper left, upper right and just drag them on tracks. Uh, the first one is my upper left, and I'll just do my lower right next. Uh, it doesn't matter the order I happen to pick. Uh, then let's, let, let's do the lower left on track four, and then we'll do the um, upper right on the following track. And now my image is assembled. But the fun comes in adding motion to this. So what I'm going to do, I'll click on any one of them. It doesn't matter which. Now, I found it helps if I go ahead and I turn off the, uh, tr the components I'm not using. It makes it easier me to see, for me to see what I'm doing. So we'll start there. And now that I have the upper left one uh, uh, available, non-transparent. I have it on the screen. Let's say I want to bring this one in in one second. So I'll click my playhead here to and move it over to one second. There we go. Then I'm going to use some keyframing. I'll click on the position value in keyframe and click the diamond. And so at one second this is where the image will be. I'm going to go back to the beginning and then I need to say what's the starting position. Well, I can use the mouse, I can use the keyboard. What I'm going to do in this case, I'm just going to use the keyboard so it's perfectly um, vertical and hold the key down until I don't see it on the screen. And then I'll go ahead and click the diamond and that sets the keyframe. So that will bring that one in down from the top. Okay, that's the way I want that. Let's do the lower right. Um, I'm going to highlight it so I see what I'm working on here. Double click on it. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and say we're going to take a second and a half to bring this in. So it would be one second and 15 frames because I'm working in a 30 frame per second project. Okay, I'll set my keyframe and then I'll go back to the beginning and let's say, oh, let's just drag it off over to the right. It'll come in from some kind of an angle. And that set my keyframe automatically because I use my mouse. I'll click on OK. So that's the second one done. OK, let's go to the third one. You're getting to see the process here, so we won't do all four uh, in the recording. I'll turn this guy on and uh, double click. And we'll, let's say, let's take longer for this. We'll go two seconds here. Uh, we could make the timing the same if we want. It doesn't matter. Set a keyframe, move the playhead to the beginning, and um, oh, I'll use the mouse again. We'll just set it off the screen over here. And click on OK. I have to turn them all back on. 
We'll click here and here and up here. There we go. Now we'll try it. And we click and there we have our picture assembled. A nice way to add a, a finishing touch to that is when you're done, take the full image, put it at the end. So if there are any seams, you don't see them. And uh, we'll go ahead and try that one more time. And uh, we might as well start at the very beginning. Click on movie and we'll play it. One, two, three, four. They all come in and then the seams disappear and we have our image. Let me give you one other tip that I would uh, I found. Now sometimes you say, well, I like this image, but I want it smaller. The easiest way to do that is to decide the size, uh, the scale of the image before you cut it up. But if you have to do it afterward, here's one thing you can do. You can click on each of the four components, go back into your PIP designer, and then we have the scale. Make sure the aspect ratio box is checked. So I'm going to change the scale here just on the width. Let's go to, to 592. And I've edited that one. I'll do the same with the next one down. We'll make sure I go to the same number, 592. And we'll do the third one at 592. Click on OK, and I have one more to do. Double click and set this one to 592. Click on OK, and in this case, I'm going to have to take my finished image and scale that back so it, it harmonizes with the other ones too. Uh, let's go to 592 and click on OK. And now, if I go ahead, we'll enlarge this so you can see better and we play it from the beginning we have a smaller image it takes up less of the screen but it's a nice way to build an image from pieces in cyberlink power director